I loved it when Garrett was there because there was always energy in the room. And uh, as he grew up through youth church, he never came without somebody with him. He had at least five people with him. If we're being real, he would drag people from school. He didn't care. He'd load up his truck and make two or three trips, come into youth church, fill that place up, and he would bring people that didn't know Jesus, right? The kind that needed to be at the altar, needed to have their lives changed. And then he would take it a step further, and he would disciple these people. We were talking about some of the guys that he went to school with just the other day that are still living for God right now. And, you know, I, I say that because as a young person, it takes people like that to change your school. And, you know, Garrett wasn't this crazy person that stood on the lunchroom table and barked at people and preached at them like that. I guess maybe there's a time and place for it. He was just a real person who showed the love of Jesus and showed that he cared about people. And when he did that, everybody wanted to be around him. And they didn't care if he was on his knees at the altar or if he was out on a fishing boat, right? They were just with him, and he learned how to love people. He's an amazing youth pastor. His wife, Hannah, was with him last night. They've got two fantastic kids. So I know he's got a powerful word today. So one more time, would y'all give Garrett a great big hand? Give Pastor Cat a hand clap one more time for putting up with me whenever I was just a crazy kid. Um, just like Pastor Cat was saying, you know, whenever I was young, um, I was kind of a troublemaker. You know, I if anybody knew me, you know, 14, 15, 16, I was a little bit of a troublemaker. In fact, I'm a pastor's kid. And so how many of you guys have ever heard the uh, stereotype that pastor's kids are always really bad? Raise your hand, you know. So I knew that stereotype, and in fact, I liked it. Like, I made sure that, like, yeah, I'm going to be that pastor's kid. I'm going to make sure if there's any way I can cause trouble, if there's any way I can cause problems, I'm going to make sure that I do that. And I never really was worried about it. I was never really worried about people's opinions. You know, I, I kind of did whatever I wanted to do. I didn't really ask opinions. You know, I didn't really care what people thought. But then, whenever Jesus got a hold of my life, when Jesus got a hold of my life, I had a decision to make. I could say, you know what, whenever I was a troublemaker, I did whatever I want. I didn't really care what people thought about me. I made whatever decision I thought was cool at the time. But whenever I turned to Jesus, I had an opportunity to say, well, now I'm going to be laid back. Well, now I'm going to stop talking about God. Now I'm going to stop being myself. I'm just going to be chill. I'm going to relax. No, I kept that same energy for Christ. And whenever I begin to step out and see how good God could be, begin to step out and show how awesome God can be whenever you are bold for him, whenever you don't worry about what other people think, it began to change every single thing that was going on in my life. I would like to personally thank Pastor uh, Josh and Pastor Catherine for this opportunity. It's such an awesome experience to be here. This is like a dream come true for me, guys. Honestly, this is so cool, especially the, the beach. This is such a cool place. So I'm so happy to be here, so grateful for the opportunity. If you've got your Bible today, if you feel like turning there, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 17 really, really fast. I'm just going to read this really quick. Uh, and this is in uh, verse 1. Matthew 17, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them to a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, we'll put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son. Well, excuse me, verse 6. Uh, when the disciples heard this, they fell on their face, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, get up. And he said, don't be afraid. They looked up and saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anybody what you've seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So uh, raise your hand if you went to uh, Pastor Fender's youth camp 
just a few weeks ago. Man, was that not an awesome experience? Give God a hand clap for that. That was so cool. You know, and so I'm deciding what am I going to preach about today? What am I going to uh, talk a little bit about? You know, and I had to think about the lineup of the ministry. I'm like, I know that I can't out preach Pastor Fender, and I know that I can't out demonstrate Pastor Josh. Who knows what he has in store for us today? So I'm just going to uh, kind of run in my lane today. So the disciples. They stepped up to Jesus and they say, listen, Jesus, this is so awesome. I mean, can you imagine what is taking place? You're sitting there with somebody that you walk with every single day. They're just a regular person from the outside. And then all of a sudden, you know, you just kind of see it happening. Some clouds begin to come. Maybe it starts to begin to lightning and thunder. And all of a sudden, this person that looked like a regular person from the outside begin to shine with light and begin to change and looked completely supernatural. And you know that the presence of God was there in a powerful, powerful way. And so the disciples, they step up to Jesus and they say, listen, this is so cool. This is awesome. This is something that we don't want to leave. In fact, what we need to do, we need to go ahead and build some houses up here in this place because why would you want to leave this? This is so awesome. So if I had a title for today's message, I would say, why leave? And, it, and I bring myself back to camp from this summer. It was such an awesome experience. The power of God was moving. People were crying. People were on the floor. Cha lives were changed forever. And you would just feel the presence of God just roll into the place. And people are changing. People are changing their minds about what they're going to do with their life and their experiences and how they're going to look at things. Things are changing, and you're sitting back, and you're like, man, why leave this place? Real quick, by a show of hands, we're going, I, we're going to do a little poll today, all right? Who in here favors Marvel over D.C.? Raise your hand. Marvel over D.C.? Marvel over DC, pretty, okay, it, we're, lo we're, looking, we're looking pretty, so raise your hand for DC, raise your hand for DC, oh my goodness, DC took the L today, so superheroes are something that I've always been very infatuated with, in fact, you know, I really, really like Superman, maybe my favorite uh, superhero, but I also like Star Wars. Do we have any Star Wars fans in the house today? There we go. We got some vocal Star Wars fans. And we got a few boos. I don't blame you. I was one of them. I said Star Wars is for losers. There's no chance in the world I'm going to watch Star Wars. But then I got into it. And it became a serious obsession of mine for a long time. So I really like Star Wars. But there's something awesome about seeing somebody that looks normal, right, like Superman that looks normal, but has the ability to do something supernatural. There is something that is so cool about watching with your physical eyes, being able to see somebody that looks almost just like you do something that you would never be able to do by yourself. That is why uh, Superman and Darth Vader and all these people, they're really awesome to watch because they're doing things that we just wish we could. We wish we could fly. We wish we could uh, pick up a car. We wish we could do all these things, but we're just human people that don't have that capability. So I remember whenever I was a troublemaker, I was that student that you couldn't keep me in the classroom. I was just wild, you know. God bless all my teachers for putting up with me. They just, you know, I walked in the class. I had about five minutes before they just kindly said, okay, Gary, you can go sit in the hallway. And so, but there was a point that whenever Jesus changed my life, I had a decision to make, and I began to look into everything that God has in store. I made the decision that instead of being somebody that is going to just kind of ride the bench and not really do anything for God, I'm going to really squeeze everything that Christianity has for me. 
And I didn't really know exactly what that meant, right? You know, whenever you're growing up, 14, 15, 16, 17, you know, you don't have much experience with church, with experience with preachers and people. But I remember one time this guy came to the church that I was at to hear at Abundant Life. And I remember he stepped up there and again, he just looked like a regular person. He looked just like a normal person. But whenever he began to speak, the presence of God fell into the place. And whenever he began to lay hands on people, there were people that were sick. They were getting healed immediately on the spot. They were getting healed immediately on the spot. And so being the goofy kid I was, being the troublemaker I was, I said, well, listen, I used to be a troublemaker for the devil. Now I think I'll be a troublemaker for God. And so I said, you know what? If this guy can do it, I was just crazy enough to believe it. If this guy can do it, I think God can use me that same way. I think God can use me that same way. Because if you're in here today and you've ever seen maybe a video about somebody being used in the gifts of the Spirit, being used in the supernatural for God, it is an awe-inspiring thing. But I'm here to tell you that God can use you the same way he can use anybody else. God can use you the same way he can use somebody that's been a Christian, been a preacher, been a pastor for 20 or 30 years. The same Bible, listen to this, if you don't hear anything else I say for the rest of this service. The same Bible that says Jesus died on the cross for you is the same Bible that says you can leave this service today Pray for somebody that is sick and see them recover immediately. The same exact Bible, the same exact word that we live our every single day lives according to says you can be somebody that is used by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's so many different nonprofits out there nowadays. And some of them are, you know, they're religious. And some of them are regular churches or the food bank ministry or, you know, charities of all different kinds. And the church has many places as Christians to help people. That's what we're here to do. We're here to help people. If they're hungry, give them something to eat. If they need somewhere to stay, maybe we can help them with that. If they need something, let's try to help them best we can. But... I thank God that I was raised in a church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank God that it's not just about feeding somebody in their natural body, but God has the power to use you through the power of the Holy Spirit to change somebody eternally, not just in their soul, but to heal their body. I promise you it can happen. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, specifically with healing, just because that's kind of where I got my start. You know, uh, somebody asked me the other day, they said, man, you know, why did you have the ability to kind of hang in there? Because so many people my age, they would try for six months and then they'd give up. They'd go to church for six months, maybe they read the first you know, three books of the Bible, they'd get to Leviticus and give up, right? How many has that happened to you before? You know, you get to the hard part and it's like, man, I can't finish this. I'm falling asleep. And so, so many people, they try, especially young people, they try to live for God, but then they give up and they wonder, Garrett, how is it that you made it through that time and you never gave up, you never gave in, not being perfect, nobody's perfect, obviously, but I never gave in, I never gave up. Because I saw God's supernatural power, I saw what he could use, I saw what he could do, and I said, how could I go back to being normal? If God can use me this way, how can I go back to being a normal person? How can I go back to parties? How can I go back to making bad decisions? If I know that God is available to use me in this way, what is the point of going back to being normal. And so, uh, you don't know much about me, some of you do, some of you don't, but uh, because I begin to step out 
by faith in ministry, God began to open doors. God began to put me in places that maybe I wasn't quite qualified to be. Uh, I think I was 20 years old whenever I got to go and uh, I was invited to preach at Crusades in Africa. And I was preaching the same healing message that God can heal you today right now that I did in America. I preached it in Africa. And through a translator, I couldn't speak what they were saying, but through a translator, laid hands and people got healed immediately. I've been to several different countries. Been to, you know, seems like thousands of services, hundreds of services. And I'm just telling you that I know that God heals. I know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today. And it's not that God can do it. It's that God can do it through you right now. Most of us in this place today would agree, can God heal somebody with arthritis? Can God heal somebody with a messed up knee? Most of us would agree, yes, God can. But then I go the next level to say, do you think God can use you to do it? Do you think that you have what it takes? Do you think that God can make the decision to say, I'm going to do this, not just like in a week or two, but immediately see them change? And I believe that if you walked in here saying, man, I don't really know, I believe that you might walk out different. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to share just a few more things about the ministry of being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, but I want to spend the majority of our time around these altars because I promise you the same way that I looked up to somebody that was used in the gifts of healing, used by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he prayed over me and says, what God has given me, I release it to you. Today is that day for some of you. Some of you have been thinking about this type of ministry. Some of you have been praying for, God, would you use me? Would you use me? Would you use me? But I'm here to pray over you, lay hands on you, and I believe that it will unlock what you have been waiting for by faith so that you begin to step out and see what it is that God has for your life. And so today I just want to go through a few things that I have learned because obviously we know the, we know the pattern, right? If there's somebody sick, the Bible says to lay hands on them, pray the prayer of faith, and they will recover, right? It's very simple. Uh, but in order to see consistent results... I begin to learn a lot about it, what it means to be used by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm not talking about being used one time to see a miracle, not ten times to see a miracle. To see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle, there are a few things that I had to learn through my ministry with the Holy Spirit to see what does it actually take. And maybe, maybe it's not necessarily just healing. Maybe you want to be used with prophecy. Maybe you want to be used with word of knowledge or word of wisdom or any of the other gifts of the Spirit. I'm here to tell you that there are things that you need to learn that I have learned that I think that you'll be able to use whenever you leave this place. Number one is... It's not a one-time thing, either it happens or it doesn't, okay? So many people, they say, yeah, I remember I prayed for somebody before and they didn't get healed, okay? I guarantee you, I probably prayed for 50 people before I saw my first real miracle, okay? It doesn't happen immediately, just one time and boom, everything's happening. Sometimes you've got to exercise your faith. Sometimes you have to exercise your ability to release the power of the Holy Spirit that is inside you. You have to exercise your ability to see God move onto that person. I was so hungry to see God move. Again, I was a troublemaker. I was involved in nothing but nonsense. But I was consistent at it. Okay? It was an everyday thing for me. It wasn't a, well, Garrett's good today, and he's a, you know, he's a mess tomorrow. I was pretty much a mess every day. And so there's something to be said for consistency. There's something to be said for somebody that knows how to continue to do the same thing over and over again. 
And again, that is what I decided to do. I said, listen, I am going to continue to pray for people. The Bible says do it. I see somebody that's already doing it consistently. I think, I believe that God can use me in this time and God can use me in this way. So I was hungry for it. If you are somebody that you have this desire to be used by God, whatever the case may be, you know, it may not necessarily be behind a pulpit, have a mic in your hand, because it was a long time before I ever had a mic in my hand. It was a long time before I ever was trusted with a pulpit, but it didn't matter because I just wanted to be in ministry. It didn't matter if I was behind a pulpit or not. I was still going to go and find people to minister. You have to be hungry. Don't let your hunger die to see the supernatural in your life. Don't let the hunger die to see yourself become somebody that can operate in the supernatural. Number two is you don't have to be, quote, unquote, feeling it, right? Maybe you messed up the night before. Maybe you're not in the best place in your life. Or maybe you just got an argument with your parents or with your girlfriend or something like that. And so you're having some difficulties in your life. Or, you know, maybe we've heard stories about how somebody got healed, right? And or we've seen somebody at a church service uh, be prayed for. And maybe they were really loud, and there was 20 people around them. And it was a very dramatic thing, or somebody might share an experience. You know, I had this going on, and and then I I entered into another realm. And I saw a host of angels around me, and just a, a very dramatic thing. But I'm here to say that the gifts of the Spirit aren't always dramatic. And most of the time, they don't have to be dramatic at all. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to make a scene. You don't have to get everybody's attention because it's between you, that person, and God. And it's just your job to be obedient to see what is it, what is it that God wants you to do, what is it that God wants you to move out in by faith, and that will take place. I'll never forget it. This was so cool. Uh, I was on a long road trip with some people in a car. And uh, somebody was in the car, they were sitting next to me, and they had some pain in their body. I can't quite remember what it was. They had some pain in their body, and they were talking about it. And I remember, you know, we're sitting in a car, and, uh, you know, I really didn't feel like just changing the whole vibe of the car. You know, we're just listening to music, everybody's hanging out. So knowing that they have pain, I'm just sitting there right next to them. I can't remember if I reached over and, you know, barely touched their shirt or something like that, or if I just sat there. But I remember I prayed in my head, watch this, in my head, like actually prayed, I was actually talking to God, praying, asking God to do this miracle, to take away this pain in this person's body. Not talking about angels come down and make it super dramatic. I was praying in my head by myself, and by this time, this person knew what I was about, and they knew my habits. They knew that I like to uh, see people. They knew that I like to see miracles. So I'm sitting there. I'm praying in my head, probably 30 seconds, a minute. It wasn't that long, and then I moved on. All of a sudden, that person looks over to me, and they say, what did you do? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, all the pain just left my body. I'm like, well, I mean, I was praying in my head. I was praying. They were like, well, it's all gone. Immediately, And it, that was such a cool experience because so many times we get stuck in this box of how we have to see God move. We get stuck in this box of how we, we you know, God, it has to be both hands on, on their head and, you know, they've got to hit the knees and, you know, all kinds of crazy things. I'm just here to tell you that you can be yourself. You can be who you are today. You don't have to be crazy about it. It's not about being dramatic. It's just about being obedient. It's about seeing what is it that God wants to do in that moment, in that time, in that season. Now, there were some times, obviously, that I was very bold for Christ, that I would have to step out in front of a crowd of people. And there was many people there. And it was kind of a a lot of eyes on me type of situation. It's like, well, God, if you don't move, it's going to be really embarrassing type of thing. And sometimes I prayed loud, sometimes I prayed soft, 
So there's no real pattern to being used by God. I'm going to say that again. There's no real pattern to being used by God. All you have to do is be obedient and God will use you. That is the only thing you need to be worrying about is, God, what do you want from me in this moment? God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to see? How can I represent you in the best way possible? Number three is you don't, and this is going to uh, change a lot of you guys' minds, you don't have to be in a church service. You don't have to be in a church service. Here in America, we love to, we love to pray for people during church, and we have the altar time, and we're going to have an altar time at the end of this message. But I'm here to tell you that God likes to move in the streets too. God likes to move in the streets too. Just like the disciples, they said, listen, you know, this is really awesome. The presence of God is so strong up here. Jesus, you're literally glowing. You're literally shining. Why, you know, we've got Moses and we've got Elijah right here. Who knows what's going to happen next? Why would we ever leave this place? Why would we ever leave what this feeling of the presence of God? It probably felt a lot like heaven that day. And the disciples, they said, let's build some houses up here. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave this place, this presence of God. The answer to why do we leave is because we have to go give the world the same ministry that we receive in here. There's going to be a lot of people in your life that will never step foot into a church service. A lot of people in your life that will never step foot in a church service. And if you feel like the only way to reach out to them, the only way to get their attention is to get them to a church service, sometimes you are going to miss an opportunity for that person. And Jesus says, he tells them, he says, listen, we have to leave. And immediately he begins to work through the power of the Holy Spirit. What we experience in church is not something that we have to come back to every single time or we're never going to get it. This is a training ground so that you know what to do once you encounter the hurting, the pain out there. This is the training ground so that you are comfortable. Listen, I saw it in church. I saw it in this example. I saw somebody be used by God time after time after time after time after time after time after time. God can still do it, but he doesn't have to do it in here. So let God show you that it doesn't have to be here. Um, I remember I was pray playing uh, like baseball in a park with my friends, right? And so we were just playing baseball, just like a bunch of teenagers would, probably talking about girls or something, who knows. And so we're sitting there playing baseball, just messing around, and, and again, I'm always looking for an opportunity to be used by God. And so I'm sitting there, and from a far distance, I see a guy with a cane, right, just walking on the street. And so he's walking on this cane. And so from that point, you know, like I'm like about to bat or I'm about to pitch or something. I can't remember what I was supposed to do. But all of a sudden, my friends, they just see me start to run. They're like, man, what is this guy doing? Like we were playing a game. And honestly, if somebody left a game that I was playing, just took off, I'd be kind of upset. Like, man, what the heck? We're trying to play a game here. Why are you not letting us finish our game? So I just took off. I had to jump a fence. And this dude probably thought I was crazy. But I came up to him. I started talking to him. And so, uh, you know, he had this cane. I can't remember what the problem was. And so we were talking about it, and I think he, that, that he ended up going to church somewhere that I knew. And so we were talking about it. So I asked him if I could pray for him at that moment. And it, God ended up healing him that very time. Ended up taking the cane up, literally taking the cane up and walking down the street. God did a mighty, mighty miracle. But the point of that story is that I was just playing baseball. I wasn't in like hour three of my prayer closet, okay? I was just playing baseball, being a regular kid, just like you are today, 
And God still saw an opportunity to move through me. And then number four, the person, and this, is gonna, this might be crazy to some of you, the person doesn't even have to believe in healing for them to get healed. The person doesn't have to even believe in healing to get healed. See, so many times, and this left a, a really bitter taste in my mouth when it comes to the healing ministry. Because so many times you see people, they'll see, you know, well, I'm going to pray for you, but if you don't get healed, watch this, and don't ever catch yourself saying this, if you don't get healed, your faith wasn't strong enough. I'm going to pray for you, but if you don't get healed, your faith wasn't strong enough. Whenever I step into a healing service, I'll step up there, I'm just bold, I'll say, listen, I got enough faith for both of us. You can receive the miracle because I believe. And so when you step out in faith, when you are praying for somebody that they need a miracle, there's no reason for you to get hung up on, well, 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 they're not living for God. Well, they don't really believe in this. They don't really understand this. It doesn't matter. They understand that they hurt right now. And they will understand whenever God touches them. I remember I was uh, promoting a, a prayer meeting that I was doing at the time. And I remember I stepped out. I was on the streets. I was meeting people. I was inviting them to this prayer meeting. And I remember this guy walked up to him. I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm starting a prayer meeting. It's tonight at 6. And so he says, man, why would I go to a prayer meeting? I said, well, I tell you what. And uh, I, I said, I tell you what, because he was just about to light a cigarette. I said, if, if I pray for you and uh, God takes the desire for you to smoke that cigarette away, would you go to my prayer meeting? He said, sure, why not? Prayed for him. He, he looked at the cigarette. He's like, how'd you do that? What? Like, it didn't make sense to him. He said, well, I guess I'm going to the prayer meeting. Guy ended up going to the prayer meeting, getting saved, getting radically changed for God. They don't have to believe, you do. You have enough faith right now. You have enough faith to be used by God and to see a miracle in somebody's life. And as I close, because we're gonna open these altars up uh, and we're going to lay hands on you guys because I believe that God is doing something awesome. I believe that this message is uh, hitting some of you today because God puts a seed in our hearts and then he waits for the word to open it up so that we, so that it makes sense to us. The last thing that I learned is that you're not going to manipulate God. So many people, whenever I begin to learn how to uh, pray for people, they would say, well, whenever you're praying, just say, God, you said in your word that healing's going to come. And if you don't heal them right now, then you're a liar, you know, and just really get uh, arrogant towards God's word because God's word does say that he's going to heal us. But God operates out of faith. God does not operate out of you trying to twist his arm with his Bible, with his word, saying, well, God, you said and you're, you'd be a liar if you didn't do it. Listen, we're not interested in that. We're not interested in that. We are interested in operating through the gifts of the Holy Spirit just like a river. We have faith and the faith flows through us. So all God asks is for you to ask. He says, you don't have to try to manipulate me. You don't have to call me a liar. You don't have to do any of these things. Just ask me and he'll do it. So today, if you could stand, at, stand on to your feet. Right now, we're going to ask God to unlock that gift that's in your life. Maybe it's not... Uh, healing, maybe it is, maybe it's prophecy, who knows what it is. But this is a time that I believe is going to get unlocked for some of you. And if you are somebody that you're saying, you know what, this message resonates with me, I want to see God use me. I want you to walk right now to this altar and we are going to pray for you. It's going to be a lot of you. Begin to walk forward right now. Give them a hand clap as they come forward.
If you want to see God use you in a mighty way, thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's our job to ask. It's our job to believe. So we're just going to worship a little bit. And, uh, and as we begin to worship, I know that God's presence is going to fall into this place. And I know that uh, maybe, you, maybe you need a healing. Maybe you need the prayer of faith. And we're here for that too. So the altars are open if more would like to come. But we're going to press in and see what God is going to do. And I'm going to invite our leaders to come up if they want to as well. Thank you, Father God.